Let's talk about what's new in Linux and open source. Introducing Mozilla AI. That's right, Mozilla, the makers of the free and open source web browser, are investing in what they call trustworthy AI. They've committed 30 million in building Mozilla AI, which they call a startup and community, which will make trustworthy, independent, and open source AI. They claim that they expect AI to reshape not only how we think about the internet, but also communication, creativity, and society at large. And of course, that it has the ability to influence billions of people. So they decided to join the game and create a startup and want to focus on building trustworthy AI products that will build agency, accountability, transparency, and openness at its core. Mozilla.ai will be a space outside of big tech and academia for like-minded founders, developers, scientists, product managers, and builders to gather. We believe that this group of people will work collectively, can turn the tide on independent, decentralized, and trustworthy AI ecosystems. A real counterweight to what we currently have today, which AI is mainly privatized and closed source. We'll see how things develop in the coming months. I'll put a link in the description below. But you can currently check out their website and as updates get made at Mozilla.ai. Moving on to an update of GNOME, GNOME 44 has launched Kuala Lumpur. After six months of hard work, the GNOME project is proud to announce GNOME version 44. The latest release includes substantial improvements with new features, enhancements, and lots of fixes. Highlights include major improvements to the settings app. So if you get GNOME 44 here soon, make sure to check out settings and see how it was overhauled a better quick settings menu, and a streamlined software app. Let's check out some of the new updates by looking below. First, the file chooser grid view. As we can tell, you can now seemingly select a grid view that allows you to see apps in a grid-like format because previously it only ever had the list view. You can now see things in thumbnails and then an updated settings panel, including new checks in the device security subsection right here which tells you whether or not you're currently protective, secure boot is active, and security events that have happened previously. This new version also tells you a better status description with check failed, checks passed, or protected. So things are easier to understand. Accessibility has been improved as well, including submenus with seeing, hearing, typing, pointing and clicking, and zooming, depending on the accessibility settings that you need to reach. There are some new accessibility features as well, an over amplification setting, has been added. Under typing, there's a test area for cursor blinking and a new setting that makes scroll bars always visible. The sound settings panel has also seen an overhaul with the alert sound now being able to be disabled as an option. The sound testing feature has been redesigned as well as some things brought together in the sound settings category. Also, you'll notice that the mouse and touchpad settings feature has been overhauled as well. Looks much better here with graphics representing what the settings are actually doing. Love the way that GNOME has been adding this in. I've noticed it in workspaces as well, where they've shown you direction and capability of various different gesture support, but you can now see what it looks like for mice that you use. Check out Delva.ai. Not sure how to start using AI for your business? Don't let your company fall behind. Start building an AI strategy today with Delva's AI Consulting. Schedule some time with Delva's AI Consultants and start integrating AI into your business. Again, check it out at delva.ai. There's a link in the description below. Other sub updates include enhanced quick settings, making it easier to use your quick settings, including new Bluetooth features, streamlined software, a better experience in the app store with software categories, including some UI enhancements. There have been file improvements, more settings improvements, and finally, new circle members. Gnome Circle is a fantastic collection of apps that has developed as part of the Gnome project since GNOME 43 was released and new apps have joined. Here are those apps, including Zap, Boatswain, Emblem, Lorem, Eyedropper, Chess Clock, Kamiku, Workbench, Elastic, and SharePoint. Fantastic work. We'll check out the GNOME Circle, which is applications and libraries extending the GNOME ecosystem. How does it work? Developers who are using the GNOME platform have to apply their projects included in the GNOME Circle, when their project is approved, they qualify for benefits, including promotion and advertising, and qualify for the GNOME Foundation membership. See the benefits here if you want. You can check out all the applications here and what their capabilities are that are part of the GNOME Circle. I'll put a link in the description below. Very exciting to see new development applications in GNOME. And finally, bringing Rust into the Zen project. That's right, things are about to start getting rusty in Zen as well. The context here is the whole platform that makes the XCPNG 
contains a lot of various programs, including Zen, the hypervisor, the XAPI, the API tool stack, SM API, the storage stack, and among other things like guest tools and so on. The platform is a mix of various languages like C, Python, OCaml, L, and even Go. Some components are old and not easily maintainable. We wanted to use the opportunity to rethink some of them and use the opportunity to bring Rust to the table. Welcome Rust to the Zen hypervisor and reason being why Rust. There's many reasons for that. You could argue there are already four languages inside the project. Why not add another? Luckily, Go is only used for one component we might entirely replace. There, it won't raise the overall number of languages. Good, but why then? Well, for technical aspects, performance and memory safety, which they talk about Rust borrow checker being able to potentially reduce the number of bugs with three other considerations being taken in one being that the programming language itself can work at various levels of low and high level programming. And since Rust is praised by its users, including has gained traction over the years, this could potentially reduce the capacity for getting open source community members and contributors to the project itself. Since it's loved by many developers, with 87% of developers saying they want to continue using it, which is, which is a staggering number in the programming dev field since languages seem to come and go almost on a monthly basis. Let me know what you think about Rust being included in yet another open source project. Make sure to subscribe below for more Linux tips, tricks, and news. Catch me in a great community on Discord, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.